Loyalty is when you're wearing the shirt, you give everything you have for the shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and when it's time, it's time. They're telling me I gotta like punch him because we're on the opposite team. Yeah. 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 That's my boy. How much does like the atmosphere and the fans actually make a difference in terms Huge of performing? Difference. You have to realize it's not FIFA, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what exactly. Yeah. 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 It's not yeah. chemistry. It'd be bro. drama in, exactly. in FIFA too in the career mode. What's that guy's name from uh, Miami, number 10? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you really consider Ronaldo a free kick specialist? Don't do that, bro. Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> no, do we? <laughs> I'm just saying, because it kind of stopped <laughs> at some point. The player and the club are two very different things. You can love a player, but like you got to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, Five Aside Podcast, footy discussions from yeah. our perspective and our perspective oh. only. And today you are joined by... What's good, what's good, Sebastian? Elisha, Gabriel, Josh, Kendrick. Yes, yes. And today we also have, we're right now in Los Angeles, California. Yes, sir. And we have a very, very special guest. We have the one and only Kellen Acosta in the Let's building. Have it up. Yeah. 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 Welcome to Father Side. Yes, hey. I, appreciate you, I appreciate you coming through, bro. Yes, sir. Sure, yes, sir. Sure. And you're based right now in Los Angeles. We're visiting. Um, if you guys don't know, or for those of you who've watched, you know, our uh, our clips on socials. We're in LA. We're doing kind of a North American tour right now. A yes, uh, few cities. We went to Atlanta, Los Angeles, Mexico, and then San Francisco to end it. Yep. So we just had to come through and tap in with the boy. One of the flyest players. Huh? Definitely. We're going to talk a lot about yeah. fashion. The game right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's only right. It's only right. It's only right. Yeah. Warming you up. Warming you up. Sure, nah, sure. Absolutely. But yeah, man. Uh, how does it feel to be here? How you doing? How's how's life going for you right now? Yeah, life is good. You know, we're in the summertime in LA. Mm -hmm. yes, um, you know, we got cool people in town like you guys. Uh, like you said, North American tour, a lot of football teams here, so a lot of footy to be played and to be watched. Yeah. Um, we we're on a little bit of a break, so now mm -hmm. I'm kind of um, just resetting, and then we're back again this week. So, yeah, I mean, life is good. I'm enjoying L.A., and um, cool. yeah, let's get to it. Is there really a difference between summertime in L.A. Yo, and wintertime in L.A.? I was about to say, yeah. 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 There's, there's a subtle difference, though. Yeah. Yeah. Is there really? Yeah. I mean, low-key, I mean, it depends on what you're into, but like... Mm. LA is different in the summer. Like people are outside. Culturally too. Culturally, yeah. hanging out, enjoying it. The mm -hmm. weather I means a little bit hot right now, but you know. Hot, really. Does it actually get cold though? Like what's the what's the December? I've heard it's like night. one of those cool nights. Like you're talking about like 60 degrees. Yeah. That's nice. Which is Man, nice. That's yeah. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> 60 degrees is <laughs> Canada yeah, group of 60 LA. degrees yeah. is crazy. LA, LA's, LA's that LA type though. You're like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's chilly out here. Yeah, yeah. LA warmth is nice though, because it's not humid out here, bro. So yeah. the heat feels a lot better. We were just in Atlanta and Miami before that. The yeah. humidity in the South, bro, is a whole different it's vibe. Different. So yeah. I'm a Texas boy, Dallas. Okay. And I grew up in Houston as well with my family. And yeah. Step outside, you sweating. <laughs> Instantly. Stay inside. Yeah. No, this is talk. nice. This is nice. Uh, not too, too bad. Summers are good. But like I said, it's hot as high regardless. So, you're from Texas. Were you, did you move to LA specifically for, you know, to join the club, to join LAFC? Or were you already in the state or in, the, in California beforehand? No, nah, I mean, so I, I grew up Dallas, born and raised, um, yeah. came through the academy. Um, played there with the first team for, I don't know, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I got traded to Colorado. Um, was in Colorado for three years and now um, got traded again. Now here in uh, sunny LA. Been here for, I don't know, a year and a half now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, LA is a place that, you know, everyone just visits. So actually like living here has been different, kind of just getting accustomed to everything. It's been, it's been dope. It's been dope kind of just taking it all in and seeing uh, what LA has to offer, which has been been cool. Yeah. Well, they cool. offered you a championship. Yeah, so, first you know, season. That, yeah. <laughs> that was a it's crazy a game too, and Eli was right. there himself. So yeah. I'm gonna, I mean, that that was just crazy. Bro. Listen, I wanna I wanna ask you for your perspective mm. from as a player from that game because for a lot of reasons, it was a crazy Man. crazy experience. Give some context it, too for like European fans. So as well. all right, so for me, so we talking about MLS Cup, which is basically the final, like the championship mm. match in MLS. You know, whoever makes it to the playoffs play each other, whoever the last two teams are, you know what I'm saying, get to the final, and then that decides the champion. And I was there. I was there doing some work with BR, and it was weird because, like, there were so many celebrities in the in the stadium. Yeah. So it was just like we were sitting <laughs> or, like, standing next to, like, Sia and Justin Bieber and, like, Michael so Blackson was there, and I saw <laughs> uh, Magic Johnson holding a Falcon. Like, it was just weird. <laughs> It's a lot of celebrities. That sounds like LA, right? LA. Like, oh, dude, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, and this is the first Andy time. Bro. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, you know, <laughs> hell nah. Crazy. But, <laughs> that was the first time. <laughs> that was the first time I met Kellen in person. Because yeah. literally, like, we were not. I was not supposed to be. On the pitch, I don't know if I'm even supposed Man, to say that. You were holding the trophy. At I was not. Hey, yo. I was not <laughs> supposed. Yo, you were in the club. I literally, bro. I was not supposed to be on the pitch with y'all celebrating after. I was not supposed to be touching the trophy. <laughs> oh. Somehow, Eli did the dive into yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the water. Someone mark the time stamp. We'll, we'll decide if we can put that out later. I don't know if we can put that out. Yeah, we'll decide in post. We saw a song in the could. World Cup. Who cares? Yeah. That is, yeah. yeah. He was kids in the World Cup trophy. Like, yeah. yeah. Facts. yeah. Facts. Salt Bay harassing everybody <laughs> afterwards. But yeah. from your perspective, like, that was a crazy game. Yeah. It's like, what do you recall of that whole experience? It was itself? madness from start to finish. Yeah. Um, just looking out, you seeing all celebrities in the crowd. I mean, the game had a little bit of everything. I ended up scoring the opener, free kick. Yes, sir. Like, Say that. Went in, a goal it went in, bro. Say that. Say that. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, like I said, yeah. uh, it was just a roller coaster of emotions. You know? Yeah. You know, going up 1 0, I'm thinking in my head, like, I scored the first goal. We're going to win 1 0. I can't wait to hold up the MVP. Yeah. I'm about to have my speech already <laughs> ready in my head. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, then Philly, uh, you know, came back in the second half, scored an important goal. We ended up going up 2 1 mm. um, in the second half uh, with a late goal. And then they end up scoring at the end. I'm like, damn. It's one of those that like, you get defeated. Yeah. And yeah. it's kind of in the back of your head, you're like, damn, like, late goal. Extra, uh, extra time, hmm. you know, is it not going to be our day? Yeah. Y'all at home too with the pressures at on y'all to win expected. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we support a shield as well. Yep. So target on mm -hmm. our back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you're thinking in your head, you're like, damn, like, are we going to get it done? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get it done. And um, yeah, then, you know, overtime was, was crazy. Um, they ended up scoring a late goal. And then I got to hand it to my boy, Gareth Bale. Legend, so bro. Gareth Bale Legend. dunked on him. Yeah. 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 And what, the 130th was, minute? Something crazy like yeah, that? Yeah, nah, yeah. It was a yeah, movie. Was I'm not going to lie. It was a movie to watch. And honestly, yeah. I feel like even just watching the sport, you know, when you go up and, you know, lose that lead, have that type of emotion in football, you have to be able to suffer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Saying you have to be able to go down, you look at the World Cup final. Bro, there's a preview like, of that final, the 3 3 in penalties. Yeah, exactly. it's literally a preview. So I don't know, even as a player in those situations, like how do you manage with the anxiety, with the nerves going up? Or it's and then the shootout, right? too. You just gotta just stay just level headed and focused mm. at any given moment. I mean, in, in those types of games, it's all about the little details go a long way. I mean, okay. any lapse of concentration. You go from you know holding up the trophy or yeah. you know crying on your way home, mm -hmm. yeah. and so for us it's just about you know being persistent, being resilient, and yeah, I mean I give credit to the, to the guys. I mean I got subbed out um, after the ninety minutes, so I'm over there just watching, <laughs> biting my fingers. What was that like? Pacing back and forth, you know, kind of just perspective you don't hear about a lot. Yeah, what was yeah, that it's like? It's one bro? of those things where it's like. You just like you, you want to help, but you, you can't do anything. Right. You're just watching from the side, like hoping, yeah. cheering on, you know, trying to motivate them. But um, yeah, it was just you know, it was it was tough to watch. Mm. They're tough to watch, but mm. you know, my guys got it done. Yeah. One in PKs, um, movie man. You know, we had a nasty injury at the end of the game. Oof. Our keeper took one for yeah. the team. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our backup John came in, had some big saves. And we're able to to lift the trophy in the end. So, like you said, it was, it was literally a movie. I yeah, mean, it, yeah. <laughs> L.A., right? <laughs> yeah, right. Hollywood. That's Hollywood, Hollywood man. Yeah. Script, Hollywood script writers couldn't sure. do that. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm wondering, just like speaking about perspectives that you don't hear about often, you were just kind of talking about, oh, we're in the game and it kind of feels like it's getting away from us. And you kind of mentioned that, like, it kind of seemed like you were alluding to the fact that sometimes games kind of happen over and over again. Like, history can repeat itself when you're playing. Exactly. So... I'm curious, just for people who don't know, like being in in that setting, like as a professional player, is it sometimes worrying that you feel like, oh, I've been in a situation like this before. Is history going to repeat itself? Mm. And like, what do you do or what do you like kind of, I guess, like work around to make sure that that feeling doesn't overwhelm you? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, I mean, any athlete would lie. They said they didn't have this this feeling. Um, I think it's part of the game. It's kind of in the back of your head. But, you know, for your standpoint, it's about being as positive mm -hmm. and confident as possible. Like I said, the game is about little moments. Yep. And, you know, you got to stack those little moments and that helps you gain the confidence, kind of change the momentum mm -hmm. of the game and move forward. I think for our standpoint, it's about just making little plays, you know, putting our head down, being resilient, even though getting punched in the mouth and having them score mm -hmm. that, you know, you thinking that the game is over. But, you know, it's one of those things, all you need is one play True. to get back True. into the game. and. You know, we had a, a big play, our, you know, our left back, Cheeky Palacios, going down the sideline, crossing it to Gareth. 
and Garrett Duncan on him. That's just like I said, just one moment, one play, yeah. Yeah. and that's that was able for us to give us opportunity to to win the game in yeah. um, PK. So like I said, it's just about you know the little details, and little moments in the games yeah. to help um, build and hopefully um, you know change the momentum. So right once the penalty shootout finished and you realized you had become an MLS Cup champion after everything you've been through to get there from the youth academy to your years in MLS prior, what was the first thought in your head when you actually became champion? Just relief. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, like, I can see that. Oh, yeah, just yeah. relief. Like, I've heard obviously, that you get a sense of just happiness, but it's one of those things where it's like, for me, I, I've won everything in the MLS. Supporter Shield, mm -hmm. Open Cup. Um, and when now we have these other tournaments in yeah. but Subtle far, flex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yo, That's a full cap, yo. Yeah. You completed the MLS. The last yeah. one. Context, like, man, like, this, is, yeah. this is like, you know, you know, the last like yeah. box I want to check off. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've been in the league for, I don't know, like 10 years or something now. And I'm like, man, like I've been itching to win this. At least get an opportunity to play in the final to win this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, just this is a relieving feeling because I put a lot of, you know, time and effort, all the travel, all like the meetings here, my coaches just dog on me and yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, and you know, all the hard work, gym sessions, training sessions, and just, you know, all the all the games leading up to it to get mm -hmm. to this point. It's just like, man, just like that that weight off your shoulders. Like finally, finally yeah. done it. And you know, once I kind of got over those emotions, I'm like, let's celebrate, let's get to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going I, off that, oh yeah, um, after. I'm curious how like the season felt as a whole, because you spoke about like momentum in terms of the game itself, but just like from the fan perspective, is there like a kind of momentum around the team? Like, are oh, we gonna win it this year, or like some type of energy, or like, what was the perspective from from you on the season as a whole? Yeah. So I mean, I was new to the team, right, and so. I mean, from the outside looking in, I mean, LA was LAFC was a team to be, team mm -hmm. to be, to be, um, to be like, um, the organization from top to bottom. I mean, it was top notch, and I'm like, man, the fan base, everything about it was just top. And I'm like, if I could play there one day, it'd be amazing. Yeah. And actually, just being a part of the team was just truly special, and I was feeling it each and every game and every training, and and so like you know, the first half of the season was we were doing great. I mean, we were we we're flying high. You know, top of the tables, um, just doing our thing. It wasn't until the summer where we reached our slump, mm. and and then I started hearing whispers of like, "Oh, LFC again." Mm. I'm like, "Again?" I'm like, "I don't recall them ever being bad, but I guess um, you know we've had a, a history in the past of having this slump and not being able to bounce back from it." Mm. And so when you start hearing whispers, I'm like, "Man, like, is there are these cracks too big to be filled?" And are we going to be able to to bounce back from that? And um, you know, we just kept chipping away. I think for for us, it was just about you know this internalizing everything. I mean, don't let the outside noise get to us, but you know, focus on what we can achieve as a group. For sure. And we were able to you know overcome this um, this little slump that we had in the summer, and and it was one of those things where you know one bad game um, we wouldn't be able to lift the supporter shield. It came down to the wire last game <laughs> against Portland to 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 beat uh, Philly for the Sports Show. So that was a accomplishment of our own. And yeah, I mean it was just a lot a lot of stuff just going into it. But you know, I was I was happy to to be a part of the team to to give the city back their their first championship. So it was a it was a huge moment for myself and for, for the fan base in LA. For sure. It's you've fine. been you've been in the league for over a decade now. I almost feel like it, it counts more that you just want it now rather than 10 years ago. Because for me, it's like I look at MLS, like the league's been growing and I feel like the league is better now than it was maybe when you were when you were first starting out. So it's like yeah. having won it 10 years ago versus now, I think means more because the, the, I feel like the competition is harder. Like more the teams. level of play, more teams, yeah. all of that. Yeah. Then just the growth of the league and the game overall in North America, I feel like it kind of counts more. So even that, does that, just thinking about that journey make you feel like, you know, um, almost happy that, you know, it didn't happen until now? No, I wish I would've won that. Yeah, but nah, nah, come on, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, I mean, cool. I mean I, like in a way, I mean, obviously the league has progressed over the years and that, and, you know, um, the, you know, ownership has, has been investing into the league, making yeah. the league more popular. Players are coming to the league and, Guys are getting more athletic, more skilled. Mm -hmm. um, you know, games are getting tougher and tougher. So in a way, mm. I could say, yeah, like obviously, 
Um, it has changed over the years, but like I said, I mean, a win is a win, regardless yeah. of when the time has come. There's been some great players in the league that haven't won. I mean, for any yeah. sport, yeah. think about people always talk about like guys in the NBA, like yeah. Melo and these guys, AI, you know, top, yeah. AI, top top players, Charles Barkley, have mm -hmm. never won. <laughs> Charles. Right? I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Regardless of when it is, you want to win. You want to put that kind of on your resume. Of course, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And so, whether it was then or now, I mean, I I just want to win regardless. Yeah, love it. Can I ask you, like, do you have any like concrete, I guess, like, things that you've seen where it's like, okay, it's clearly like this is something that's changed. This is clearly something that's better. I don't know. It's a question that you don't have to answer. But um, what do you mean yeah. within the league itself? Yeah, like having been there for that long like mm -hmm. i'm sure you've seen stuff where it's like oh six years ago this interaction would have been different or like this would have gone differently i mean i think it's a combination of a lot of things i think just from facilities i think every team is really investing in facilities and having top-notch um equipment to to get that competitive advantage for their team mm -hmm. um fan bases are growing tremendously that's what i was wondering about. um you know like lafc and the atlanta seattle's um atlanta for sure yeah. well charlotte um, St. Louis. I mean, you mm -hmm. name it. There's the fan base is growing, and the sport as a whole in the U.S. is growing a lot. Um, talent coming in. Um, you know, that's <laughs> one thing. I think <laughs> talent. <Yeah>. talent. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. what's that guy's name from uh, Miami? The number ten. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, don't know. I was like, 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 I think just the accumulation, all those things is yeah. just making the sport grow. I mean, mm. it's been, I mean, I don't think I can really pinpoint what it is, but it's like literally everything has really just advanced um, yeah. since I've been in the league. I have one question. Um, for actually everybody you okay. talking about you talked about your free kick you know take free kicks for LAFC the national team bringing up Messi just scored a bang up a free kick <laughs> is there a free kick specialist y'all have when growing up that y'all really idolized like for me it was the knuckleball sensation come on with G Ronaldo Jorginho so the knuckleball you know what I mean so for you as uh. he takes free kicks as well as y'all who do y'all look do we do we really consider Ronaldo a free kick specialist? Don't do that, bro. Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> no, do we? Yeah, I'm just saying, because it kind of it kind of stopped <laughs> at some point. His peak, yeah, yeah, it go. stopped. It yeah, stopped really at some point. We're talking about peak, peak Ronaldo, 2008. <laughs> hey, wait, hold on. Yeah. All right, go ahead. You're tweaking. You're tweaking. <laughs> is that the question? Yes, it is. No, That's the yeah. question. Is Ronaldo really no, considered a obviously free kick specialist? 2000, 2006. 2005 to maybe a certain point in his Real Madrid career. Yeah. Middle of Madrid, yeah. Yeah, like he was a knuckleball. People were actually, it was a fascination. You hit it at the ball, yeah. of, you know, just that the ball doesn't spin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get technical if you want to get technical. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Listen, I'm not trying to get technical with you. Yeah. That's yeah. Coach Quasi. <laughs> not, yeah. not but I'm but saying, not because for me, it's like if you, Messi's been consistently scoring free kicks, his like even now, his whole career. Like it never really yeah. slowed but down. But he's also the, you can be a specialist and not be the best specialist ever. But I think if the de his peak decade of being one that good should okay. count as Did still you, being a specialist. Yeah. Yo, you don't have to be phenomenal. at your peak your entire Never scored a free kick in this Definitely. Life. I'm not, yeah. hey, listen, hey. <laughs> it's not my job to score a free kick. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I don't need to, but I'm just saying, like, I, I look at Juninho, I look at Messi, like players like yeah. this. Until the day, like they end their careers, they're consistently like Messi's still playing, yeah. but guys like Juninho, he's been so for you, who consistently is it? scoring who free is, kick. Who is it for you? Juninho. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's are Brazil. Saying, are you oh. saying Ronaldo isn't a specialist? I'm not saying. You're just saying he's not the best. I'm asking the question: yeah. Is do you guys think he's a specialist? Because I know for sure he's not the best free kick taker nah, ever. Nah, nah. But that's not even that's yeah, not even nah, the I point. Say he's the best, but he, he's kind of changed. Yeah. How people take free kicks. Yeah, that's so think, about, think, of, think about mm -hmm. think. Of, I mean, I would say I'm I'm more of a Messi fan than a Ronaldo fan. But mm -hmm. I'm just talking about just in terms of his run up. Yeah, you got kids mm -hmm. really the, doing do the stance. The the it is like <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right? he's, he he's influential it. for sure. Yeah, for sure. But well, my there's a reason is for like, that for for the free kick. Yeah, yeah. because they see it go in. Not yeah, in bro. Of, <laughs> he could do all that and miss, and no one's gonna do it. It's because yeah, it went in. You know, it went in. Yeah, went in for a decade. But for you, who's your, who's your free kick guy, bro? Ronaldo, for sure. Real Madrid Beckham. fan. Yeah, what absolutely. Job? No Beckham? Nobody Beckham in? I like Beckham a lot, but still. Beckham. Peace. Um, yeah, I'm going. Beckham's up there. I'm going to give you There's so many. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Um, um, Raquel what's the dude from, um, I think he's Turkish. He plays for Inter now. Chalanoglu. Yeah, that's yeah. another one. Back in his, what was it, Leverkusen? He was in Leverkusen. Yeah, the one yeah. from Hatfield. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't even know about that. You know, Dimitri Payet wasn't too bad. Yeah. Dimitri yeah. Payet. Crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. crazy. Well, that season was crazy, though. Yeah. 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 Anything he shot was going in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> keep his... Dimitri got done Keep dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, He's Wait, a streets will never forget type You know, of I want to say something about Dimitri, but I want to know who's like your, your free kick specialist. I don't think, I don't know. I was a pace and power guy. <laughs> so free kicks was like the finesse aspect of the mm -hmm. sport pace was never power. like, yeah. like <laughs> Alex from Chelsea or something. Alex from Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's a fact. With that left? Yeah. Top I was wins. in a set piece. You want to sit Nah, like if, if I was to answer a set piece question, y'all going to laugh, but it was, it was Lampard. Like, no, that's, that's a good one. Penalties, like he was just a finisher. No, he was definitely very consistent. The Chelsea, Chelsea. fans are gonna somehow find every way to put a Chelsea player As in the should. conversation. As he should, I, yeah. It's inspiration. No, what am I supposed to do otherwise? Yeah. Yeah. That was the question. Your <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. but you say for you was Juninho. No, I see. that was him. Okay, okay, yeah. for you then. Tough man. Messi's up there. Mm. I like I like Kevin too. He does his thing. De Bruyne. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? China. I don't even know how to pronounce. John Ugly. Yeah, he's another one. Mm. Juninho. I mean, I feel like he was just money. Yeah. 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 Pirlo. Raquel May was crazy. Raquel May. Raquel May was crazy. What or um, yeah. the goalkeeper uh, Senna from Brazil? You guys really? know he scored yeah. like two hundred mm -hmm. goals. Yeah. Hey, he's yo, going, he's going PKs and free kicks. Okay. Yeah. I know about the free kicks. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Go for yeah. him. He was That's money. Nuts. It's like a layup. Yeah, <laughs> you don't even got to run like, don't back. Out, don't <laughs> out, don't <laughs> out. Yeah, 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 it's over. Plus one, plus uh, one. Sure. Now, beforehand, like before, we were just talking about on the subject of Dimitri Payet. Like that's a player who I remember when it was time for him to leave um, West, West Ham. West Ham yeah. It just felt like he wasn't happy at the club. He wanted to leave, and the fans like turned against him. Like he was like the the baby face of the team at some point, mm -hmm. and they just turned against him. But I feel like in sports overall, when when it's like the team that has to make the decision to remove a player, it's mm -hmm. like the fans don't think about that. But when it's the player who feels like, you know, the environment is just not benefiting them or their careers, right. like everyone turns their back on them. It's like, no, you have to be loyal. And I feel like like we've had that conversation before. Yeah, but, yeah, but how do you feel about that in terms of, you know, when is it okay or who is it okay to be loyal or disloyal? Or is it even disloyalty to be like, I just no. don't feel comfortable in that space anymore yeah. and I want to leave? I mean, I feel like people people are just passionate because it's their club, right? They want the yeah. best players to stay. But just yeah. like any other job, you want the next hired job, right? Mm -hmm. If you're at like, let's say West Ham, you have dreams of being maybe in a different league and taking that next step. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, when people say loyalty, I'm like, you, loyalty is when you're wearing the shirt, you give everything you have for the shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and when it's time, it's time. Yeah. And That's so yeah. people should just take that into account. Yeah. That no matter what may have happened, but when I was on the field, I gave everything. Mm -hmm. But you know, but that's just how it is, right? People, people just want their best players to stay, and now it's always it's always gonna be a problem. You can't you can't appease everybody. That's yeah. just that's just how life goes. It's, it's interesting. Real. You can't go to a rival team. That's. The I was player. just about to say, what about <laughs> rival teams? Because we're <laughs> seeing a lot tough. of that in London right now. Yeah, like I mean, with Chelsea you know, and Chelsea, Arsenal, the Man yeah. United, yeah. and passed around a little bit. But yeah. hmm. I think before, <laughs> I think before it was more. Um, it was more frowned upon. Yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. it should be now. Yeah, now it's kind of wait. Why it's changed, it be, but it was, I feel. I feel like we, we always yeah, talk no about why. this. Yeah. It was frowned upon, but with the stars, it was happening. Level, look at R9. Hugo Ronaldo. Yeah, the guy went Milan, Milan, Shoot. Barca, Barca Madrid, Madrid. <laughs> Ibra, so many Milan, Milan. Ibra too. Yeah. yeah, but it's one of those things where it was like ingrained into them. Like you had to hate the other team. Yeah. But nowadays, yeah, okay. with the best players are playing on. On these opposite teams, but also friends. Mm, yeah. They're doing jersey swaps. They're hanging yeah, out yeah. after having dinner. Yep. Yeah. You're telling me I gotta like punch him because we're on the opposite nice. team. Yeah. yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. 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 Like, we're gonna take. We're gonna have yeah. dinner tomorrow. Yeah. Like it's like it's it's, it's yeah. different nowadays. Yeah. But before it's like I I I just hated you from. I was, yeah. How do you feel about it? How it is today? What Makes about, sense to you. What about here in LA? Y'all have a little derby. Yeah. A little derby. Oh, yeah. Chuck I mean, it's cool. part of it. They're not even in LA though, right? Say again. So they're not even in LA, right? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. we, we was out not. there. That shit was car. Yeah. It was a drive, huh? Yeah, it was a drive. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, like it, it was, was a drive. It was, it was a drive. Yeah. We had no idea where. Well, we I was going. like, bro, we're in California. Oh, we like yeah, even Carson. <laughs> even Carson. Heard you. Um, yeah, I mean, you you still feel. I mean, it's just one of those things is being competitive. Mm -hmm. You want to win. You feel it from the atmosphere and 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 you know the fan base is going out. It you're getting tagged and stuff in social media. 
Mm-hmm. You feel it. And, and it's one of those things like bragging rights. Like you don't want to, yeah. like you, you know, you lose a game, you say, oh, the city's white or whatever, the city's yeah. red. I'm yeah. like, damn it. Hate that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. much, yeah. And, you know, you don't want those. It's like a pride thing, yeah. More so, but it's one of those things where I mean, you know, I got friends on the galaxy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not like I hate him, but it's like I want to win regardless. Of that. Yeah, that's just, that's just me. Facts. Is that right. awkward after matches? Like, if you win or lose, like, how's that conversation goes with someone who's like your friend? <laughs> it depends on how the game yeah, went. Yeah, <laughs> depends on how the game is. Yeah. Honestly, like sometimes I'm like, please don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm happy shaking. Your yeah, hand. yeah. Why am I don't touch me? Yeah. <laughs> but it's the opposite, right? You win and like I'm gonna go over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good game, bro. Good game, man. You almost had it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. I have a question. Just like speaking about atmospheres and I guess derbies and fans and stuff. How much as a as a pro soccer player? How much does like the atmosphere and the fans? actually make a difference in terms Huge of your performance. Yeah. Is Huge the 12th difference. man yeah, an actual thing? Always I was always want to ask that question. Yeah, no, it's actually a thing. I mean, I think we, I could really feel it now and have a better appreciation for it after COVID. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Having no fans in the stadium and playing these games, like the energy level is dead. I could hear literally everything. Um, my coach is yelling at me and I can't even pretend to ignore him. <laughs> yeah, right. <you> know? <laughs> There's no one in the stands. Yeah. Um, and you're just like, you're trying to find motivation and energy and it's tough. And I think for, from my standpoint, whether it's, you know, being at home fans or opposing fans, that's, you need that. That's that part of the game, mm-hmm. that aspect of the game that just makes it that much more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. You're playing, you know, if you're playing, like for my, for my instance, playing um, against like Galaxy, you score a goal, and, you know, you shush in the crowd and it's like mm-hmm. dead silent. That's a great feeling. Or you're mm-hmm. playing at home, you score a goal and your crowd's going crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are the moments that, you know, as us players, you just really just enjoy. That's a part of it. Whether you're on the, you know, the good side or the bad side of it, that's mm-hmm. part of the game. That's just, I mean, every player just wants to to be a part of. Right. What's the hardest stadium that you had to play in, in terms of like the atmosphere, where y'all were like, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Qatar. Nah, not really. Gotcha. Because it's it's one of those things where it's almost like a bit like neutral. That's guitar, yeah. yeah, it's true. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's more so like going to like a, a certain country and feeling the fan base mm-hmm. that's there. Mm-hmm. Like even going to like Mexico. El Salvador, or Mexico, or El Salvador, or like in the league. You, even if you're playing again in Galaxy, or I played in Wembley. Um, yeah, like playing in like kind of those stadiums, um, you you really feel it. I mean, I didn't get a chance to play like in. In like Argentina, but like you can see like the the videos of like the Boca River games, mm-hmm. oh, like yeah. that sure. different, <laughs> different, sure. yeah, yeah, right? I mean that really go. makes them. Nah, say again. They say women and kids shouldn't go to those games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's, it's no, they do. Life. They, do. I mean, they yeah, do. they're passionate. Yeah, and I yeah. love it. I love it. Just seeing, just seeing those videos, you just get chills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. imagine that with no fans. Yeah, yeah, true. It's yeah. not the same. Yeah. Would be the same rivalry, right? Fans make the game almost. So how did you get into it? How did you become a fan of the game? Just growing up, man. Um, you know, growing up in Dallas, I went to they were the Dallas Baron at the time, FC Dallas now. And, you know, it was one of those things, one of my first sports that I ever played. Got you. I excelled at a young age and when you Word. feel like when you yeah, when you're good at something, you wanna stick with it and you Word. wanna and you know, wanna venture out and do different things. I was either watching the game on T V, playing FIFA, mm-hmm. playing outside or actual physically going to games. And so when I was doing all those things, I mean I just kinda just fell in love with the sport. And I got more dialed in, you know, watching different players. My favorite player growing up was Ronaldinho. Mm, okay. And so I'm like, I... man, like this dude is just one, he's just cold. Two, yeah. he's you know, he has a the flicks and the tricks and then he's just smiling. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine like he doing all these flicks and tricks and then he's smiling at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get all I, mad I would make yeah, 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 yeah. And you can't Two even foot hate tackles. Him he's, oh, he's what? A nice guy. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, yes, as he seems, right? Yeah. But yeah. like that's what I'm saying. That's like the kind of like joy that he brought to the game. I'm like, man, I, I like, I want to be, I want to be that player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's why I aspired to be. I mean, I, I'm not like a Ronaldinho type player, but that yeah, was yeah. someone that I just grew up just idolizing. So, are you in the? I know it's different for like us being fans of the game versus being a pro. Is it for you like, you know how in relationships like you have the honeymoon phase, 
And then you also have like wow. this 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 nah, phase of like like I, you get married. Let's let them get it. And yeah. yeah, you have the honeymoon phase when it's like everything is all rose hued yeah. glasses and it's you know it's, it's nice. euphoric and it's you know it's great. But then you know if you get you heard it here first. He <laughs> felt that. He felt that. that. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, hey, bro. Like, cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wrap this up. Wrap this up. <laughs> it's not about me. Like, not yet. The team, bro. No, nah, but if it like it can feel like that, but then again, you hear of um, you know, marriages where it's like you spend a, a long time with somebody, and obviously you love them, but sometimes you might not really like the person. So, is it where where is it at for you with, with your relationship with football? Like, do you still yeah. like it? And love it. Good analogy. Yeah, love it. I mean, that was good, man. Like, that was yeah, good. Yeah, we had to let him go all the way. You know what I'm saying? Like no, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, I think it's one of those things where, you know, when you're a young kid going through, you know, playing your first games, you're like, man, I love it. Yeah. You you get a little taste of everything. You see the fans, fans sharing your name, you put on the jersey. And then it's not until you hit that rough patch, whether you're you're not playing, things aren't going well. Um, you get injured, yeah, and those are like, man. Then you start second guessing. Yeah. You know, is this for me? Coach doesn't mm-hmm. like me. You know, it's too hot. Am I good enough? Yeah, all these kind of negative thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, man, maybe I don't really love it as much as I thought. Maybe mm-hmm. I only kind of like it. Maybe yeah. this is just for now. Um, and then it's about just like resetting and just really being present and just figuring out why you are playing this game mm-hmm. yeah. and all the moments that it took to get to this point. And so for me, I mean, I, I loved it from the start. And then, you know, when I had that r- rough patch, I just kind of liked it. And it wasn't until I, you know, got a reset when I changed, like, my um, uh, my environment. Um, able, well, I was able to kind of fall in love with the sport again. Because I think, I think that's what happens with players um, when they're at a club for so long. I think things get a little bit stale. Mm-hmm. Just like like your analogy to relationships, right? If you're yeah. doing the same thing over and over, it becomes routine. Like mm. now you got to shake it up a little bit, right? It's a little bit of a different date, right? Whether yeah. you, if you're doing a movie every Friday, you're gonna switch it up. Let's go to the mall instead. Yeah, yeah. Right. let's go to dinner. Let's try this different restaurant. Mm. So like for me, is it was about changing different things, mm-hmm. and so you know, changing my environment helped me a lot. You know, learning under a different coach, having mm-hmm. different, um, different like fan base, having. Um, different teammates that helped me fall in love again and then just being in LA just, in, just another relationship that helped me fall in love even more so yeah. again so I think that's that's part of the game that you know people um, kind of endure but it's been a it's been a, a nice little journey so far I feel like that's and that's something that um, I guess you guys can all attest to or like chime in on mm-hmm. I think like you speak of the environment that that can be big I feel like in you know, a player's career and how they mm-hmm. play, um, just overall the turnaround of a player's career. Because I've seen a lot of times it's like, um, like Pogba, I think we were talking about the other day. Was it with Which you? Were, like we were talking about the fact that Pogba was, you know, he played for United and it felt like just the environment, like it's not like he was a bad player it's or he evil. didn't take the game yeah. seriously. Mm-hmm. It's just that specific environment might have not been, you know, for right him. for him. And I think that a lot of times, like, we, there's probably a bunch of players in our teams that we felt like, oh, this guy got a bad attitude or like, oh, man, no, sell him. Like, man. I don't play him. Yeah. He's not performing, whatever. But then we don't know what could actually be going on in the structure of the team that makes it just not right for him. And then that might lead to him or her, you know, that might lead to them like acting up a little bit. Cause yeah. if you feel like 100%. you're not, you're not comfortable somewhere, it might, literally change you into a whole different person so yeah uh one is there any time where you guys have actually like seen a player you know on your teams not do well and then you have to think back about it and be like maybe it wasn't his fault maybe it wasn't just he just doesn't care maybe there's something else within the team itself that makes it yeah. not suitable for yeah, him all the of course, time, man. sometimes of course. Um, <laughs> so i was just like i grew up being an ac Milan fan like I grew up being a Balotelli fan, so I yeah. learned very, very young mm. that like the player and the club are two very different things. And yeah. like you can love a player, but like you have to also understand that these people are like they're it's it's not like I don't know like people who are like 
more so hotheads or more so like uh, more emotional or play more emotionally on the field, you got to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Like, yes, the media can spin it and turn stories and make it seem like, oh, this guy is hurting the team, this, that, and the third. People are human. At the end of the day, like, if you take someone and you put them in any line of work, that will come out. It just so happens that that line of work is football and there's cameras mm-hmm. and there's an mm-hmm. audience and there's a field. So mm-hmm. that's real. Uh, to answer that question as well, being a United fan, it's interesting. When the pod came to the club, mm. yeah, it was a good shot. Great season with PSV. And he even said that that moment he felt like came a bit too early in his life. Yeah. You know, we kind of need somebody for the seven, you know, a very athletic winger, very flashy style of play. And after that, he did well for Lyon. We have to realize it's not FIFA, bro. Yeah, exactly. That's what exactly. Yeah. 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 It's not yeah. chemistry. It'd be bro. drama in, exactly. in FIFA too in the career mode. Bro, <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> drama with your manager. Nah, right. yeah. nah for me. The youth <laughs> players trying to play in the Champions League final. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you ain't never play nah, white. Fact, in these it's a language, you know, barrier. Yeah. It's yeah. adjustment yeah. for you and your family. And the the I guess the time period of grace is so small. Yeah. yeah. I think for me as a Real Madrid fan, it'd be your teammate, Gareth Bale. Um, talking about, I mean, he obviously had an incredible career with Real Madrid, mm. but we saw as Ronaldo left, how his relationship with the club kind of changed, relationship with the fans. Mm. It started becoming like the Wales golf, you know, flag that he had and kind of all those little bit of jokes. But I'm sure something in the environment changed that changed the way that he was going to play. It could have been off the field stuff as well. So that definitely gave me a perspective mm. on on humanizing athletes, yeah. specifically to my club, Gareth Bale, speaking to see of, where he was uh, to that. Speaking of Gareth, uh, the World Cup, that moment. You want to what I fouled him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, your boy <laughs> too. Yeah, <laughs> he tells about it. To. Yeah, it's one of those things where yeah. you know as a player, and I've I've seen him shoot the ball with his left foot. Yeah, I mean, I, just want, I mean, I what do you think is going in? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, doesn't yeah. matter. I don't, I don't even want to even yeah. think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I'm like, I just got to chop him. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care. I was just gonna chop I him. Like that energy. Matter. Yeah, you know, reminds me of a young me. A young you. That's you. Two weeks ago. Look at this scar on the leg. Y'all see it, right? Can we um can we do some fun questions? Yeah, of course. Sure. Um, is Mbappe nuts to ask for two billion? Here we go. We is talked it, about is it nuts. That's what. Oh, that's, that's, that's a new. That's a new news. No, no. He's saying should Mbappe that's, come back and say, "Yo, actually, I want two billion." Yeah, we had this conversation. So he's being offered damn near a billion dollars. Yeah, he's saying that nah, he should ask for more. Nah, I think. What do you do with nah, a billion I mean, he, dollars? He already makes, he already makes <laughs> plenty of money. What do you year, do with a, a year, billion dollars? In a year. What do you mean? A lot. He already makes plenty of money. Yeah, it's not yeah. even about money. I think he has more aspiration of just being the best player. Yeah. yeah. I think the the last thing that he wants is Ballon d'Or. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what in a Champions League. Yeah. yeah. The last? Like, last two things. Okay, okay, okay. Like, like okay. he hasn't yeah. done yet. He hasn't yeah. done yet. Yeah. He hasn't yeah. achieved yeah. yet. Yeah. He's done everything else. He got a World Cup. It's so a one year two. contract, though. It's one year. He's 23. Comes back, he's twenty four. Yeah, he's but 24. Like, way, I think he thinks it's a wasted year. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And that's the thing about his profession. It's it takes one year. injury too, by the way. True. We've seen that happen you, to a lot of legends. That's true. Yeah. Is taking a billion. Yo, my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boot walking too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a fact. Nah, you gotta no take it. Right. Run it yeah. up. Run it up, bro. Yo, yeah. what? I almost, almost hit him up like you up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Hey, hey big head. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fact. Uh, oh, what you, Al Hilal, what team was it? Yeah, Al Hilal. Al Hilal. Yeah. yeah. Straight to the D. That's where Benz is. Right now? No. Uh, or is he at uh, uh, my bad? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. No. Okay. It's, yeah. It's Saudi's becoming like a super league for real. I'm That's watching the name of it, I've right? Been the, I've been seeing the um yeah. the pictures of training. Yeah. I'm like, yo, the combinations of yeah. players is yeah. crazy. No, nah, yeah. they're Benzema, Conte. But I'm also confused. Mares, yeah. Is it is it gonna be similar to how um the Chinese league did? No, they did it for like two no years. ways. No ways. I mean they're doing it. It's gonna it's gonna work. Yeah, this is and there's getting younger players too. They're getting guys in their prime. Mara's going over there yeah, now. Yeah, that's Mara's crazy. also 200 degrees over there. But <laughs> different. The different. That's different facts. Different, different way. Culturally, yeah. yeah. D- culturally, different style of life. Yeah, yeah. All those variables that you don't take into account. You people to see the paychecks and the names. Sure. Yeah. That's a fact. But it's like like we talk about, you know, yeah. humanizing the athletes, right? Yeah. You automatically True. think that they're gonna do well, but you don't. You don't know. Environment. Yeah. I mean, I, some of these teams they were made to succeed. Yeah. But I think it's one of those, like, the difference between that and China and, like, even Japan is... Well, they, they, have, have, a, the, they have a relegation system first. Huh? China and Japan didn't really have a relegation yeah. system. They so do. So the, the, the structure of the game is different. But I think also <laughs> Saudi Arabia, like, they have the capital and the resources to accommodate whatever changes need to be made yeah. for the players to, to, yes, adjust to their climate, in, in different ways, whether that's the weather or just the way of life, but also because 
if you're putting that much money and effort and energy into something, because it's not just Saudi Arabia, like all of it with Qatar and you know Dubai, the UAE, UAE it's yeah. all connected. I feel they're all collectively like we're going to bring this part of the world to the forefront of the sport. So I think that because of that, I'm sure we're not going to teach them that, yo, mm -hmm. some of these players are going to have a hard time adjusting. So I'm sure there's like, there has to be some sort of plan, a collective plan to make it, you know, somewhat similar to where these players have played before. And a lot of them is is Europe because I think they're in it for the long run. So they, that like, I would, I would guess that they have something in the works to make it more comfortable yeah, you would for hope them. so. so I mean, we're, yeah. yeah. We're going to see. Yeah. They have to keep getting the players, though. They have to keep going. It yeah, won't be enough. Yeah, it has to be every summer. But the players are going to get cheaper because huh? once once the league establishes itself, you don't have to buy players for that. Like, you don't have to pay players that much because now it's a league that's, like, established. But yeah. I'm saying they're still going to need a bit more, I think. Well, I promise you in two years, they buy their way into the Champions League and then they're just a European club. All right, well, so bet on Champions it. League? Mm -hmm. Why not? What? The they're Saudi, not Saudi club? club? I promise you. I don't think so. Israeli teams play, play in Europe. Qatar is playing but in the They're already part of UEFA. Because they paid their way to get in. Because they didn't want to play against teams in the region for political reasons. So they paid. Why can't Saudi pay? Saudi are paying they for players right now. They don't have the political reasons. We'll see. We'll see. I promise you. In, I, in two, two years, years I think you will be But it's possible. Yeah. yeah. A possible. It would be wild though. Surprised. That'd be nah, insane. It'll be a different. That changes but the sport it's still forever. The, it's the same players that was in the Champions League <laughs> exactly. before. So now you can go Saudi <laughs> and play in the Champions League. So what's How much farther is it travel wise? That'd be double the travel though. Yeah, this is double the travel. They are traveling to Russia though. They got the super jets. And Turkish teams are playing in it. It's not. It's an extra hour. It's not Europe. They got the super jets, bro. They going They're to Europe in two them. minutes. Yeah. yeah, they got the super jets. They're good. I don't yeah. think the travel is the issue. <laughs> yeah. They got the. Super I don't think jets, the travel bro. is the issue. We'll see. No, it's very interesting. Up, I mean, not you bring a good point. I mean, why not? Why not? Qatar is playing in the Gold Cup. What? Why? As a guess, though. How? How do you yeah. think they would? What would be the PR behind them going inside? Because they obviously wouldn't say they so, bought their okay, way. So, so if you're if you're a younger player, right? right. You're you're 23, 24. <laughs> That's when it's really scary. Wait, what? No, I'm saying the PR. Be, <laughs> no, because you know how yes, PR. We our way in. You know how PR like they they phrase well, things. They already. I promise. That it's all. It's already planned. No, I'm asking you. What do you think the PR <laughs> well, will be behind? Well, let me explain to you. In 2025, what's happening in the US? The Club World Cup, right? Yeah. With 32 teams. Yeah, yeah. That is the advertisement for it. It works. It's a big thing. It's cool. And then the Saudi clubs the next year are in the are in the Champions League. I promise you. No. What's funny? <laughs> don't even pay them no money. No, <laughs> Just like, Two no. They can no. never hold it in. <laughs> no, no. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? I think it's possible. No, I, I think it's possible know. too. We didn't think we nobody was thinking about Saudi and like club soccer a year ago, <laughs> two <laughs> years ago. Be there for sure. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I so it's like yo, literally any at this point, we'll see. They got the money, they got they got the PR on the way, they yeah. got running. I don't think talking so about though. this is the most beautiful country in the world. He Anything is possible. Them, Definitely pay. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, be yeah. careful. Be careful. Because I said that on the last pod. <laughs> and and they were coming for me. He's literally no, paid to say it, though. Been, I mean, it's a, it's a nice country for sure. But obviously, Yo, thank you. Yeah. No, it's fun. But obviously, like, when you... Or the ambassador of anything, yeah. you're not gonna you talk bad paid. about yeah. Yeah. what you're a part of. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's all I was trying I'm to not say. Yeah, yeah, I'm not even. No, I'm with you, bro. See, I got a cosign now. I got a co you. If I go yeah. down, you going down with me. That's we it. all going down. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you can cut. Yeah. 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 Cut and edit. Yeah. 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 You gotta even include it. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's a fact. Nah. So basically, no, we were talking about we were talking about all this on the podcast like a couple weeks ago. Not to get me canceled. No, 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 no. It's not like that. It's not like that. And basically, I was I was just making a point that like. Ronaldo at this point is the ambassador for the country. Yeah. And ben there was a specific uh, interview where he's talking about like, oh, like Saudi Arabia is the most beautiful country. The nightlife is amazing. Um, you know, my family loves it here. And I was just like, this is like he's getting paid to say it. It's like this is a, this is an advertisement for the country. Yeah. And like the comment, like that, that video got like two hundred k views in like a couple of days, and there was just mad people in there like, "Yo, Saudi's a beautiful country. You don't know anything about us. Like, yeah. it's but not two, just an advertisement; it's the truth." And I two was things like, can be true though. Yeah, he I was can like, be I'm not trying to say it's false. Like you can do an <laughs> ad for a brand and believe what you're saying, but also be paid to do that. That's yeah, all so. I was saying. Yeah. No, I'm with you, bro. Nah, I'm going that's down. That's the best way of doing it. Yeah, actually, saying something you already believe yeah, and, and yeah. getting paid and for then you it. You paid for the exposure. Yeah, that we've been on the topic of for a while is location. And so I wanted to ask you, because you mm -hmm. express yourself well on the pitch, but also all, how has LA affected not only your music taste, but also like your fashion style as well? Mm -hmm. yeah, everything, man. It's LA. I mean, similar to like New York, you, know, you guys know all of yes, that. Yes, sir. But oh, like, I've been I've been in different markets. I've been in Dallas. It's, levels. 
not as great. What's your, what Denver? <laughs> oh, you saying New York's above? Yeah. Oh, okay. What trends? Right. I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, <laughs> we can talk about that we too. Can talk about I was it. also asking, is there a specific trend in LA fashion? Because we're not from out here. So is there or something music, that yeah. you picked yeah. up from out here? There's, um, music as well. Or even seeing more fashion around you. Because I'm sure Denver is very different from LA in terms of that. A thousand percent. They went yeah. to Patagonia. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> North Face and that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Patagonia, not drip. Uh, Patagucci. They didn't bring, not, <laughs> they didn't bring out the gray one. Most the, the, the best? The gray one? The bro, it's the finance, yeah. bro. Yeah. Biggest drip. Nah, it's, it's hard to tell, though, because... I feel like a lot of people in LA are tourists, anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially like where I'm at, like it where I live. I feel like yeah, yeah, that's people aren't actually from there. So it's hard to tell. Like, like for me, like I can tell when someone's from New York, okay. just by the way that they dress compared to mm-hmm. someone from LA, you can't really tell. Unless they're like a surf bro type, type yeah. deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's so in, in that in that sense, like it's hard to tell. You know, there's just, I feel like there's just like a lot of fashion stores, but there's not like a certain, like, that's LA style. I see. I got you. I might get hated on for that because they're probably, people are probably going to say, yeah, there is. Yeah. But I mean, that's just, Man, that's, that's not how of, I feel. That's how I can, can think of it a bit, but it's like, it's not a bad. You think, I mean, you're saying brands? Nothing. What, like, what is LA like? For the me? trucks. Wow. There's trucks. No, the there's only, big the only here. I think. Yeah, like that kind of like vans, like vans. vans. Yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Skater bro kind yeah. of. Skater, yeah. yeah. But it's more, it's. There's it's, a lot of streetwear. Fitted hats. Man. Bobby it's, Hunters it's, and all that. It's concealed yeah. within yeah. like LA hood fashion though. That's I an, think, I think overall, crunch, nip. That's a, yeah, yeah, like overall, LA doesn't have, I feel like, uh, a certain fashion sense, mm-hmm. but different More, subcultures within yeah. the yeah. LA yeah, community have fair. their own have yeah. their own thing. Yeah. Like obviously, like the skaters and the surfers or like the like beach goers, hippies, or right? Whatever. Like they have their own mm-hmm. thing. Right. Yeah. Also, like, you, like you think of Texas, you think of like cowboy boots and like, yeah. Wranglers yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. When, like when you think of like LA, besides like the Chucks and. Mm-hmm. Long socks, dickies, that sort of thing. Yeah, I would say also y'all have really pushed like the whole healthy, healthy living lifestyle, which has come with brands like Lululemon, Aloe's now blowing up I'm not, everywhere. Like, it's like a trend, like people, it's like a trend to be vegan. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I, mean, right. I don't even know if they really like it. It's yeah. really I don't know. I tried it. And I'm like, man, Yo, yeah, tough. it's crazy. Yesterday we tried you to order. Pizza. You could finesse it. You could finesse it. Yesterday we went to a pizza. Store. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and then I didn't eat pizza. We went to a spot. <laughs> We tried to like get food. There was pizza on the menu. Oh, this is crazy. We ordered, all of us ordered pizza. Mm-hmm. They said, you can only have three for the table. <laughs> what do you mean? Like you could only have <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's what we said, bro. You got exactly. capped out? I looked at him. I don't said, like money. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we're trying to give you bread. So like, what do you mean? He said, you know, um, you can only have three pizzas. It's a rule of ours. No, actually, he said he's it's COVID. only a one pizza per table. <laughs> no, right. right, you're right. Oh, yeah, and even crazy. Right. Make the adjustment you're for right. and That's allow true. three. Yes, it's a one pizza, and that was it. Because they only got because they got one mini oven that they only use for COVID, and now they serve it all the time, and they can't. But it, I just felt like it was just some weird. They don't like a lot of weird things. Weird, don't like money. Things close really early too, compared to New York. As one well. thing, yeah, one thing, is, yeah. yeah. One thing that's really bugged me about this city, and I want to know your thoughts on traffic. Why yes. is everything so far apart? Bro, we drove 21 miles from here like, to, nah, to where? Nikki Sports, like yeah, in Santa Monica. Yeah, it was 21 miles, miles away. Oh, Some people Nikki say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a car, like what do you do? You just Uber. You <laughs> walk. You Uber <laughs> walk. So you kind of, it's like one of those things where you want to live where you work. Mm. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. You imagine? You don't, you don't work you don't, or you don't live. So, or like you got to live with where you can afford. So That's fine. another thing too. It's expensive. Nah. So it's, it's, yeah. it's an expensive city, but it's like depending on what you're into, like it's tough. Like mm. if you're into like the fashion space and all that, you want to live like kind of in maybe like the art district downtown or you're living on this side of town, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, because everything's over here. Mm-hmm. And But it's tough then. If you want to live over here, then you got to spend a little bit extra money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's a, fact. It's, a, yeah. it's a weird balance. But yeah, everything is kind of spread apart. Like you talking about Three miles is thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder There's how no it, quick way to get to things. No, Facts. no subway. None of yeah. that. Yeah. And so I wonder how it impacts like just social life in general. Because in New York, like every time you go outside, you're running into people. Mm-hmm. Or like if you go to a spot here, y'all could just be like, "Eh, this isn't really like that." We about to go hop on a train. Yep. Fifteen minutes, we had a whole different spot. Yeah. Versus here, it's like I feel like if you go outside, you're not really like just coming across other people. And if you go to yeah. a spot. You can't really That's just spot. rally the troops and be like, "That's the spot." Let's drive thirty minutes over yeah. to you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah it's like, it's, I mean, it's literally what the saying is about, like who you know, not what you know, here yeah. type deal. Yeah, so it's like, 
Like if you're trying to go to the spa, you gotta make sure you know the bouncer there, maybe the owner, exactly. maybe the chef, maybe the yeah, <laughs> the type <laughs> the deal. Chef. Yeah, yeah, like, but it, it's really like that because, because like sometimes like you think like in certain areas like where I've been, I'm like I'm a football, like I play soccer for a club, like I want to eat here, and then you come here like okay, and that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> we we got you know you know Robert De Niro and Justin Bieber in the back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like there's always gonna be someone bigger here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is always it's kind of interesting too. Just walking down the street and the scene is like I'm like, oh, you're like that's crazy because like the New York the New York energy is like you see how uh, you could be like, yeah, I'm so and so, and they'll be like, and we got so and so in the back, and yeah. like automatically as you said that, I would be like, okay, and I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah, I don't give I... a fuck about like yeah. Robert yeah. De Niro. I'm trying yeah. to. Eat. I'm trying to go to his table. What are yeah. you having? I want what you having. Like, matter of fact, is he? Is that he energy done? is different. Can I, I like that. Yo, seat? Can you yeah. take this to go so I can get a seat, please? Because yeah. I'm really hungry. Last that's movie like, wasn't even that good. No, like, like, but that's that's one of my problems with LA. Like, I had last time I came here, I had a conversation with an Uber driver, and she was just like, it feels. Like who's real in this city? Like it feels like everyone. It's all about the names mm -hmm. and the, like the it's like what. Like, everyone you know, what I got a point on that too. Yeah. I, I gotta find like, a good community. I have a question though. first, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah What's your question? What is your um? So being here, what was your philosophy on life before coming here, and how has it changed? No, before Fine I came question. here, I'm like it's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I'm like there's stars here. Yeah, I'm gonna see all these different people. I'm about to be hanging out with all of them. Hopefully, yeah. you know, I'm rubbing elbows with freaking. Drake and Co. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know. And Co. Ty yeah, but you yeah, not actually being here. I mean, you 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 get your different pockets, different places that you go to, what yeah. you like, and you know, you know what places is more uppity mm -hmm. and what's more relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, what about like more so in general though, like life, like like just about like how you express and how you live. Has like being here changed that? Like even just like your day to day. Mentality. Yeah, I mean, I feel like stuff. for me, in terms of my interests, I think I was able to explore that more so. Like for me, like I'm more into the fashion space. So I've been able to meet yeah, like cool what, designers, right. creative directors, um, yeah. owners of various brands. Uh, I drink a lot of coffee. There's coffee shops on every corner. My guy. Um, I'm into wine. There's wine bars. My guy. <laughs> I'm a foodie. There's a bunch of restaurants on every corner. It. I mean, it's like I'm able to tap into that more right. so here. Yeah. And I feel like that aspect's been super dope, uh, which I haven't really been able to um, explore in the past yeah. because in the the Colorados <laughs> and and the the Dallases, I was more like in the suburb. Mm. So I was kind of away from like the downtown. Yeah. So I wasn't able to yep. explore it as much as I, I have here. And partly because I'm older too. Mm -hmm. So now my interests have changed. I'm really trying to tap into to different things. So um, gotta bring you to New York, man. Yeah, come through, mm. bro. I was just there uh, yeah. last week. Nah, we week. gotta bring you permanently. Yeah, <laughs> permanently, bro. You know, yeah, I have a question, uh, and I've been I'm scared. You've been itching. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't be scared. Because <laughs> we had this conversation yesterday, and I did a little bit of research. Because um, you're half Japanese, correct? Yeah. So you know what uh, the the samurai hat, right? It's called a a kasa. I learned, mm. right? It's like the triangular know. shape, you know, like hats. Okay. But Should that's something that, like, if you think of like samurais or whatever, like traditional like Japanese stuff, you'll probably think <laughs> of like those hats. Mm. And we're about to go to Mexico. I want to think. <laughs> no, 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 let me get this off. No, let me get this off because no, no, I want to. No, hold on. I want to ask you, right? <laughs> we about to go to. Going. I, just, I don't I, know. Bro, this guy plays. We about to. Mark. No, no, I don't. I'm, I'm dead serious, bro. Okay. I want to know right. your perspective because as a half Japanese man, you have you know some sort of, you have a say so in like how other people perceive you know that part of your culture. Mm -hmm. You can tell me whether or not because my intentions are pure. It's a valid whether question. Or not it's something, a valid question. Whether or not something is offensive, right? You're talking about wearing the hat. Because on yeah, yeah. Okay. Because from their perspective, if yeah. I'm going to Mexico and I'm like, yo, I want to wear a sombrero, that's like, oh, you know, that's a little, you know, um, offensive towards their culture. You're not, you know, really paying due diligence to these people's culture. You're kind of making it seem like a costume. For me, my intention is like I'm not trying to customize it or make it like it's Halloween or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's just my way of like having fun with a culture it's that I'm, I'm trying yeah. to bring. So if somebody is like, if I'm going to Japan and I wear one of those hats or whatever, I'm like, I'm embracing Japanese culture. Is that offensive? Depends on the angle, bro. It also depends on who you ask and what too. you do. Everybody has different. But view I'm, on it. I'm saying my intention is to just have fun. I with think a just new off, off the rip, you're just gonna think it's offensive. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I think so. That's what I, was I think in terms of Asian culture, I think with the whole, you know, anime wave, I think it's more accepted. Mm-hmm. I feel like sombreros aren't something you see on the regular. Yeah. Like you see a, a yeah. freaking black guy wearing a sombrero. <laughs> yeah. What's this dude doing? He's mocking us type dude. I think it's how you wear it too. I feel like it's not like regular costume, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like in a way you would feel some type of way. Just like if you rolled up in Texas, I saw you in a cowboy hat and like yeah. some regular clothes, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's yeah. this dude? No. Yeah, yeah, I, gen- yeah. I genuinely want I know to know because it's just like like the intention matters. It's like in football too. Like you you if your intention yeah. was to touch the ball and the, and the ref feels might like be to touch the ball, but I two foot t- <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy. I, but I was trying to go I, for I, the that ball. That intention not making sense. No, I was I was that's going fair. for the ball, but that's fair. But you I missed. broke you your leg. Miss. Yeah. yeah. No, but I genuinely want to know from somebody who you know has a connection to different culture, a culture yeah. that has certain clothing and things like that associated with it. I wanted to know because like I'm not gonna go out of my way and go in Mexico and piss off yeah. Mexican people if there's something that might be insensitive to them. But can I, I offer yeah. something? So I, I have some shit too. Um, some cultures have historically been like the butt of the joke more facts, so than others. Facts, right? facts. Mm-hmm. So you're Haitian. I don't know if there's something culturally Haitian that if someone brought over, I kn- I feel like Haiti as a culture is, would be much more open to some, like a foreigner mm-hmm. dressing in traditional dress or something because historically in the media and culturally. Haiti has not really been the butt of the joke. Depending on the media space, too. Yeah. American Story, media. Historic. In terms of, like, clothing. And yeah, in terms yeah, exactly. of clothing. Yeah. In other ways, in other ways absolutely. Other ways, but, yeah. I'm talking clothing. Yeah. clothing. Exactly. Whereas, like, if you were to go to, I don't know, a culture like, perhaps, like, Chinese culture or Japanese culture or Mexican culture, where, like, clothing has been used to, like, cartoonize it culture has. a little bit. Mm-hmm. I saw it in a documentary like, from Abercrombie. That's why, there's, too, that's why like, yeah. a Mexican person or a Chinese person or a Japanese person would be like, oh, is this person wearing this clothing because they saw it in a cartoon and don't understand it? Or are they just trying to be cool and chill and just embrace our culture? Mm-hmm. So that's 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 where it is. Like, if you go, if you come to, like, Italy, a country that, like, historically has not been made fun of for the, for their dress, mm-hmm. and you're wearing, like, like I don't know, like, the like some shades or something, and, like, yeah. the, like the mafia type, like, yeah. mafioso type fit, People are gonna be like, oh, you're Italian, blah, blah, blah. They're gonna like, they're, they're gonna embrace it because it's not a sensitive thing for them. And I'll say too, mm-hmm. it's the spe- specificity of a sombrero, not just Mexican clothing in general, because my mom's actually yeah, in California. We don't wear that regularly. Exactly. Yeah, and my mom's been in like California. Really She'll get like a Mexican costume. style dress, yeah. but that's not made fun of. She's like, oh, this got the beautiful flowers, the patterns, et cetera, et cetera. So you can buy Mexican clothing. It's, also, it's the it's, specificness of having a sombrero on your head yeah. and it's how also that's been used. It's exposure as too, because for me, that's again like the media and movies and shows control the narrative. For me, genuinely, like I haven't gone out of my way in my life. Like I'm just being real to learn about Mexican culture. Mm-hmm. That's as it soon also as wasn't I wasn't presented to. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't. No, it wasn't also offered. Hated, yeah. That information wasn't something. offered to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the when I think about you know what something that I could you know put on myself to you know mm. embrace that culture. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Sure. So I'm not even in a position to be like, there's something else that could be less offensive. Like I had to, mm-hmm. y'all had to tell me that nah, that's something that's yeah. offensive. I didn't even know. I was just like, I'm gonna have fun if with you, it. If you go so, to England, I feel like, and we talked about this, but if we're when we go to Mexico, it should be next tomorrow. Week. Yeah, not nah, for real. <laughs> 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 now, nah, like tomorrow morning, tomorrow, like, yeah. literally. <laughs> if you're gonna have a sombrero on, and you're gonna include it in content, whatever you do. Pay homage to the article of clothing and yeah. talk about it a, li- yeah. a little bit. Even you can't just be goofy on camera wearing it. Yeah, bringing it there or buying it there. Yeah, 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 yeah as well. It. Buying, yeah. gotta buy it. Oh, you have to buy it. Yeah. Buy it. Yeah. At least put in pocket money in someone's pocket too. In that case, yeah. it's also not. Fit Yo, what's your favorite place to travel to, vacation wise? <sighs> Man, let's go around with that too. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> get the bag, bro, get there. the bag. Yeah. Country. After the Ronaldo. <laughs> you be an ambassador, yeah. bro. Yo, after that Ronaldo act. <laughs> <I got laughing. laughs> yeah. Hey, bro. Uh, I mean, for me, from my standpoint, I love London. Mm. Yeah. I just love, I just love how people are dressed there. I love how I'm able to just maneuver in and out of the city. No language barriers. Yeah. Um, I have friends there, so I'm able to, you know, see different parts of the city. And you know I love football, so it's just a football country. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of games. I mean, I you can go to London, games. yeah. yeah. Right. So I can go right. to how many different stadiums in London? Yeah, five, six. <laughs> um, More, yeah. yeah, it's just always just good time, good vibes out there. Um, but, I mean, I, you probably think of something like tropical. Huh? Yeah. Did you know, ever move know. there? Yeah. Would you ever play there? I would play there for sure. I heard you. Do you listen to like any British artists, music wise? Like Dave Stormzy mm. type vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I like Dave. More so. Got you. 
vacation. What is your favorite place to travel vacation? Yeah, yeah, I gotta say Spain. I'm Spanish, um, so definitely Spain. Been all over the country. Beautiful, beautiful cities, beautiful beaches, weather, all that sort of stuff. Lived in Madrid for three and a half months as well. Mm. So definitely Spain for me. Yeah. All my family is well, not all, but my family split up mostly in Ghana. Mm. Um, so I'll say Ghana, somewhere in London as well. We went to London actually. Yeah, actually. I've been there a few times. My cousin used to live there as well, actually. Yeah, so yeah. it was nice out there. And I think one of the things you highlighted about London is definitely the accessibility. Yeah. And being able to maneuver. That's a big thing for me when I'm going to a new spot. It's very New York friendly in terms of the way it's right. set up, the training, yeah. everything. 100%. Yeah. Their subway system is stellar. It is. In comparison to New York, I don't, well, that's the only the thing. The delays we be having, too. bro. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, very, very accessible. I say the most beautiful place I've been to was Haiti. The favorite place I've been to was, <laughs> of course, of course, of course. The favorite place I've been to is probably Canada. So I've been to Toronto and Montreal. Mm. Fire Montreal scenes. was beautiful because it's like all the French influence and just the way it's built. Mm. Um, and in Toronto, everybody was just mad nice. Toronto, the dope. food was good. They have a big Caribbean population. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the first time a man has ever bought me a drink. Mm-hmm. It was and it wasn't like <laughs> and you enjoyed it. He wasn't even yeah. trying. Like, we just having a conversation. He's like, yeah. "Yo, you yeah. want a drink?" I was like, "Yeah." yeah. Like, Had huh? a great conversation. Yeah, right. yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> Toronto is an underrated city. New York, Toronto, Toronto's dope. Dope. Yeah. Used to nice people in New York. Yeah, we don't yeah. get that. We don't <laughs> get that. Fact. I think that sometimes is overblown, though. I ain't gonna lie. I think it's a little overblown at times. What the, that we're not the rudeness? Nice? Yeah, I think it's a little overblown. It's not. Yeah. It's historic. <laughs> it's no, I, 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 I think it's also relative because, like, I realize depends where and how and like. But no, yeah, at all. I'm from DC. I'm from because we we had a lot of rudeness in Atlanta. Which even must the, be a Southern even, hospitality, right? Like, even the fact that Philly? people in New York don't say hi to each other. That's the that's, biggest that's, thing. No, that, that, that is real. Like, if you're just walking on the street, you don't, you know why? You don't even look at too somebody. There's too many heads, bro. Who are you going to say hi to? Nah, that's, <laughs> that's to everybody like, hi. Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. Versus here, like. I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate it, though. I'm not going to lie. Because yeah. also, it's a certain type of privacy that you get. Like, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's also relative. Because mm-hmm. I realize even myself, like, it's not the rudeness that we have, but it's also the expectation on other people. To mm-hmm. interact with you. Like they cool. have, you know, a certain speaking, level. Speaking of that, for you culturally, like in locker rooms and stuff, are there cultures that like you found have had a harder time adapting to the MLS and the American style of play than others? Like people coming from abroad that you usually, notice the trend or a pattern where it's like... Oh, usually hey. Europeans. Really? Oh, wow. Well. I feel like they, they, they struggle a little bit in terms of... Cause it's almost like a like a culture shock in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like people from like more of the, the Hispanic countries come here and do well. Love it, wherever that love it, excel on the field. Mm. Um, but yeah, the guys that, that have came from Europe, hopefully, you know, they're not gonna dog me after this, but <laughs> I, I just seen them struggle in terms of having their, their family find a balance. Family's um, hard. Yeah, family's mm-hmm. really hard, sure. especially if they don't speak the language. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, That's it's tough. really tough. Um, and yeah, and just like coach, like trying to find, find their way through the city. Um, I feel like. In, and at times, I feel like they knock out everything the city has to offer in the first week. Mm. And then they're like, then what? <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I've had even people come in here. You know, you're going to Disneyland and here, 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 here. And you do it the first three days. And then you're like, okay, so what are we going to do now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it's been, I've seen it, you know, firsthand how people have struggled um, in, in various cities. Right. Before we get you out of here, though, got to say you are one of the flyest guys in the MLS. Yeah, Always be posting sure. on Fits of the Week for Wavy Footy. Okay. Um, just seeing how much the MLS has changed in terms of fashion and style, the tunnel fits. I remember the shoot you did last year with MLS for AAPI month. And just really the the movement of fashion in the sport being a lot more similar to what the NBA is doing. How has that felt and changed throughout your career? Yeah, and where do you about, see it going? It's about time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Facts. Been a long time coming. Mm. I think... Just for athletes, we're only viewed as athletes, but we have other interests as well. Say Fashion it again. And one of yeah. them. That's a way to kind of express ourselves. So it's been cool to kind of see um, the league take notice of that. Players are really want to express themselves and evolve in that nature. And it's now it's like a like a competition off the field. Facts. Like be be- uh, best dress type deal. Mm. And so it's been cool kind of seeing you know the different styles come into to the locker rooms and you know from what you guys are doing or mm-hmm. MLS is posting. And the different cultures here, because the U.S. is a melting pot. Yeah. So to see guys from Europe bringing their own style from, um, you know, from the Asian countries, from South America, seeing all the different styles come together is mm-hmm. pretty cool. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we can set our own way and our own trends. I feel like we're playing catch up with other sports. Yep. So it's a, now we got to find a way to, you know, be in the forefront of that. For sure. Um, you know, 
I know I think the tunnel fits is great and all, but now it's like the next step. Like we need to have guys doing features. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of seeing the same dudes doing GQ in this. Mm -hmm. Like time so to come on the five side pod. Patrick Mahomes <laughs> is not fashionable, so stop posting it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a shot. We saw we saw <laughs> you on GQ. Come on. We saw you on. <laughs> hey, Mr. GQ himself. Yeah, that's hey, what I'm saying. No, yeah. but it's just like certain stuff like that. They really yeah. want to broadcast guys that aren't mm -hmm. fashionable. No, They're yeah. just big name like, athletes. Yeah. Big name athletes. What does it mean to you to be not fashionable? To be not fashionable? Yeah, like what, like what do you mean shit. by that? Just dress bad. It's just just being, not influential. It's about being like, just presentable. Like yeah. everyone has their own style, but like if you're coming in a crumpled shirt and like some shorts and you ashy and all this, <laughs> yeah. and <your> shoes busted. <laughs> like fast. that, that's that has nothing yeah. to do with like being fashion about just being put together and presented. That's yeah. more so what I was getting at. Cause some people like I've been seeing a lot of fashion content has been around like, oh, like what's the what's your least favorite type of What's your least favorite trend right now? Something yeah. like, oh, I hate that people wearing chunky shoes, or I hate that people wearing cargo pants, or you know, yeah. different things. So it's like, I, I was not curious. Even that. I hate when the shoes are like, if they're white, why are they brown? Nah, facts. <laughs> yeah. Like, or, facts. you know, like it's not even, it's just, like I said, just about, like that's your own style, stick yeah. with it. Yeah. But at least, like, <laughs> make it white. Why are they brown? <laughs> it's deep. Nah, the it's dirty crazy. Air Force One. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like, they <laughs> creased up in my, like, okay, yo, the frat girl Air Force One. put them in the back. Come on. I was never rocking with the, um, dirty vans or yeah, but Converse, that was, but that was cool back then. It's yeah. not cool anymore. Well, now gold. <laughs> well, now Golden Goose makes sneakers that look yeah, like they're already beat up, and it'd be yeah. six fifty to buy. Yeah. And the resale value is crazy. Who? Margella got the painted joints. That look yeah, like some paint. I mean, remember when Kanye was dropping the already the distressed, the big yeah. holes yeah. in it? Like that's that's become part of the yeah, style. But, but I mean, that yeah. style is not for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I don't mind people having their own little flair, but it's just about just the little details. So who do you think dresses really well within the MLS, of course, besides yourself? Some people to shout out. Um, Rather than on the negative side. There's some Dallas boys that do really For well. For sure. So I'll say Seb, Coast and Seb, yeah. Seb um, Coast as well. Um, I'm trying to think. There's there's some, there's some a lot of guys, to be fair. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Yedlin? Yeah, and definitely. DeAndre's own thing. Yeah. And now, like, they they went away from doing um, their own fits in mm -hmm. Miami. They were in, like, tracksuits now. Because of Messi, you think? Nah, I just okay. heard, like, they're just, they just ventured away from it, I guess. That's so wack. Some clubs do, yeah. Yeah, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, Messi got no drip, I don't know. bro. <laughs> yeah. You said what? You got Messi, got, Messi no got no drip. No drip. Yo, That's facts. Right here say that? One more time. Messi has zero drip, bro. DeAndre, DeAndre. <laughs> anytime, anytime, DeAndre, anytime, teach him how to dress, bro. Anytime Come you on. see him out, he just got a t-shirt and some Definitely. Jeans. Holding that little, you know, little <laughs> I think you drink it. Or he yeah, got some flip-flops. Yeah. He got some flip-flops. Definitely. Flip -flops. With, the, with the big calf tag. Watch, watch crazy. Nah, of course. Yeah. Man, anybody could buy a watch, bro. So you can't buy Now that type of Let's go right now. That one. That shit is three houses on his wrist. Nah, that's a fact. Crazy. On the topic of fashion, though, um, I wanted to ask you about your tattoos because that's an extension of your fashion and your yeah, style as well. 100%. Like, do you have any favorites? Yeah, or like probably, any probably my ribs. It's my my dad and my mom's birthday. Oh, that's beautiful. It's the, it's the quote. It's like the honor of thy mother and thy father. Yes, sir. And um, yeah, I mean, for my my family or my everything. I mean, mm. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without them. So mm. that was just a way of just honoring them, all the hard work, getting me to trainings. You know, just putting up with my nonsense since I was young. <laughs> yeah. And so, no, I think it was one of my, you know, one of my favorites um, that I got, like, some years back. But mm -hmm. probably get some more in the future, but right now I'm just chilling. The rib hurt, too. Sorry? The rib, getting tight on the... I was sweating a little bit. <laughs> Tough. I wouldn't say I was crying, but it was a little dry. It was uh, close. It was close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was close. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. close. Bro, I was close. Bro, was it was, it was some onions in the room, bro. Onions in the room. Yeah. We got How long was the session for your ribs, bro? Nah, it was, it wasn't too long. Okay. Probably took like 40, 45 minutes. Oh, that's yeah. late. Yeah. What's uh What's on the arms? What's the sleeves? Yeah. So I got. So it's just kind of just an ode to to my culture. So I got the the bonsai tree here. That's beautiful. Uh, I got the bald eagle, Statue of Liberty. Mm. I got a Japanese house here. A koi fish here. That's Word. tough. Oh, shit. You add it up, bro. Yeah. 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 I got Thanks. double K for nah. my parents' names. That's fine. Um, I got a tribal here. And I got the Philippians 413 code here. Yeah. Their Bible verse. Yeah, 413. Um, I got an angel here, another angel here, and some doves. And then um, I'm a Leo here, so I have a lion here. Um, When's your birthday? July 24th. Oh, he's a July it's Leo. Past just past. Monday, yeah. Wow. That's Happy fun. Belated Happy belated birthday, birthday bro. Uh, How'd you celebrate? It was chill, though. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm 28 now. I'm old. Man. Yeah. It's like, oh, this bro. one, don't dog. Do don't, yeah. do don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, bro. <laughs> look at look at look at it. Yeah. Like an old head. Yeah. yeah. Hey, now. All right. Yeah. All right. Now. <laughs> That's fine, though. I got koi fish on my left. Oh, yeah, well, dog. That's yeah. tough. What does it mean to you, the koi fish? Yeah, it just means about free flowing. One or two? No, just one. Okay. Well, you have two. You have two going like in kind of like a yin and yang. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's tough. But it's also like going upstream versus downstream, just perseverance within life. I think it's like a right. koi fish. Yeah, well. just and push so, forward all yeah. Yeah. And it was something that my grandma always expressed, like being a koi fish. It's like one is just keep moving, keep swimming. Mm -hmm. And it's all about perseverance and moving on forward. That's fire. It's kind of owed to her. We're trying to get them to get into tattoos. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very open, but it has to be the right thing. I think my first yeah. one, though, might be so I'm an Aquarius, and uh, sevens is my number, it means a lot to me. So my first, middle, last name is all seven letters. And they all start with G, seventh letter of the alphabet. And I was born on February 7th of 1997. Oh, you got the whole thing laid out. Just you know get it, bro. <laughs> now, wait, wait. It gets, you got it laid out. It's better, though. Hold on. You got and it then, laid out if you, Hold on. If you, you slant, go get that if you right slant now. a bunch of sevens, it turns into the Aquarius sign, and I'm an Aquarius. So I think that'll be my first pet. Just pad. get a big seven on the That's side a lot. of your head That's right a lot. There. So I think that'll be <laughs> sevens turning to the Aquarius well. sign, I think will be my first one. I'm just trying to figure out where. But I think within a year, I'll probably get Eli, so what's your first test? You're not getting tests? Get in the clove, bro. Get the clove. My mom would beat the shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she'll she'll, she'll yeah. get over it. Yeah. Nah, you you, you got to hit her with the that, shock factor. Like, nah, yeah. trust, my mom trust, didn't trust. want to talk to me for like nah, a bro. week, bro. Really? West African prayers, bro. I'll teach you how to do it. <laughs> what about Pops? How's Pops with it? Nah, Chill. He's Catholic Italian. Oh, okay. Nah, That's man. tough. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> two, two, two sides of it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the one is on, is on. That's, yeah. they do. That's what uh, I'm saying. They got to get... You can, your first one... Take it off. Nah, your sure. first nah, one could be a more hidden nah, one, too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure. But yeah, I might... Probably maybe, not. Bro. Maybe something like... <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't want to find out. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'll do a chest. You like what you're saying, bro? For me, it's like... Or you I have a I have a weird relationship with tattoos because I've been drawing my whole life. And so, at some point, because of... Um, my love for drawing. I actually wanted to be a tattoo artist. Mm. Wow! So Bro, I, it, and I got man. I got super into tattoos. Like Ink Master, I was yeah. addicted to Ink that I, show. It's here. I think it's in LA. Yeah. Oh, do, they, do they still film? The, I don't know, but I know like around. the shop was it, it was mm. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's different. Um, and I followed still. Like there's this one guy Joey who, Who's that who won. I forgot what black season. Ink, black ink. But that's like one black of the ink. one of the people that I'm like, yo, if I ever do get a tattoo, like I want to get. Like tatted by one of the Ink Masters, you mm. know, a uh, champion. So that's something. So it's like, yeah, I love tattoos, but I'm not in the space yet where I could be like, like, yes, I want this, and I'm ready for this to be on my body for the rest of my life. So it's like, yeah. what, what, now you can get it in three years. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, you got but time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, but now nah, if I do, it's. It's it has to be something meaningful. I don't know whether it has nah. to do with my yeah. my spirituality or my family or like just you like know me. something that represents my own life philosophy. Yeah. It has to be something that means something yeah. to That's me. That's why I feel too with the first but, one. Yeah. yeah, the first one. Yeah, I feel like the first one. You definitely but I think I have mine. I Once you get the first one, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's I heard it's addictive. This, this I heard it's addictive, right? Yeah. 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 I've so, said I wanted maybe to get uh, something that represents R nine. Because my dad's a huge Brazilian fan, and my middle name is Ronaldo because of that. So we'll get, I think we'll get the jersey tattooed on the back. Hey, hey yeah. 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 Nah, do, the hair, hair. do the hair shit, bro. Yeah. Yeah. The hair. Imagine that'd be crazy. Nah, no, man. man. That's but fine. you know, other than fashion, uh, one thing that we're we're big on on Five Aside is music. You know, That's we right. spoke of some of the the UK artists that you know you listen to, Dave Stormzy. Overall, though. Other than those specific guys, what's like your, what type of music do you usually get into? Is there something specific you listen to before matches or anything like that to get in the zone? But what's your what's your music taste like? Um, it's kind of all over the place. Honestly, being from thing. Texas, I listen to country. You might guys might hate it, yeah. but that's just I part respect of me. it. I grew Put us up, on. I grew Put up us listening on. to it. Darius Rucker. Who's good? Who's good? Who me? Probably Morgan Wallet. It's like that pop country. Okay. Yeah. Probably the easiest you can get into. Most I just Rascal Flats. Yeah, Rascal Flat. Darius Rucker is yes. the black one, right? Yeah, there black. we go. Come on. Um, but yeah, a little bit of everything. Obviously, like when I was in New York, I went to the Drake concert, Drake and Twenty One. Uh, I saw that too, bro. Yeah. Yeah, the Thursday night show in Barclays. That's where I, I was there. I was there, bro. Yeah. Okay, I heard you. I that told you crazy. to tell him, bro. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I bring it up now. I bring it up now. No, it's cool though. That's crazy. I hadn't been in concert since like J Cole, like five years ago or something. Oh, wow. pre-COVID. Cole yeah, Cole. So was good. it was uh, no, it was cool to be back out there. But it's a little bit of just everything, honestly. Um, 
kind of just love it all. And, and as far as game goes, I'm kind of just weird. Before, it used to be like, I got to get pumped up, got to listen to... Dreams and Nightmares. You know, like. yeah, that kind of vibe. <laughs> now it's like, I just put my phone on shuffle and just mm-hmm. whatever I'm kind of feeling, I just listen to. That's cool. Like, who who put you on to UK rap? Like how you how did you even... I just think it's that? just... It's big now, you know. It's just big on. now. Yeah, with Central C. I just kind of just... Right? No, before Central C, though. Oh, yeah. I was like last week type deal. Yeah, but, that's um, a fact. No, I think it, it just, just became big. And like I said, I like going to London. And so just being in London, you just kind of, I just hear, I'm like, okay, I like that beat. Yeah. Like the trap music, whatever. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Diving in deeper. Like, oh, I like him. He had a cool sound, like Dave. Um, yeah, and it was just kind of just one of those things where you just want to see what's new and what's out there. Sure. And, Pop um, Smoke also pushed that. Just bringing yeah. Joe Pop to Smoke. New York. Yeah, yeah on the, the big cross drill. Yeah. And then even his orders, you know, 808 Mellow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. 808 Mellow. It's a fact. Right. Yo, before we get out of here, obviously, you know what I'm saying? We got one of the drippiest ballers in the game, five aside. We care about what we wear. We care about what we put on. Mm-hmm. We're going to go around, lay it all out, what we wearing today. We in LA for the pod, starting with my man Kendrick Start right here. Sebastian. What you got on? Sebastian. Start with Sebastian? Start with me. Start, what you got, got on? the cozy <laughs> fit. No, yeah. You got my favorite fit of, of the podcast so far. Thank you. I appreciate Damn, it. Man. Well, um, love. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> from Sebastian. From Sebastian. Right, yeah. Uh Good, it's good look, bro. Paris, uh, Scully, Paris, um, light. Where the hell? I think I thrifted this. <laughs> right, um, thrift to be in the drip. Sh- bro. These yeah. are I got these in Italy. These are like attached to it. Bandana mm-hmm. shorts and then light. Um, I was wondering about that. That's yeah. tough, bro. Yeah. Always uh, put them on the feet. They should sponsor you for real. They should. No, they will. They will. I, they, they, they will. will. <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah, I'm just like came from training. Got the the dunks on the plums. Those are fire. Got the Nike. Is this Stussy or Stussy? That's a good Stussy, thing, I think. Man. Because it has the two dots over the U, don't it? Stussy. It's got the two dots. Yeah, so Nike back into pants. And I got a honor the gift. T. That's an LA brand, bro. They're tough. I got some of their stuff too. Yeah. And then Syndicate Hat, which is an LA like shoe store. Fire. That's fire. Dope. Uh free promo. On the feet, Puma, Future Riders. Um, making an appearance yet again. Got the yo, these blue shorts. I don't know where I got them from, but I just know that. We in LA, I'm a big Nipsey fan. I wanted to rep Nip Nip. Um, mm-hmm. the Crenshaw Marathon clothing uh, brand. So I knew I was going to wear this for sure, but they sold out of the the matching shorts. So I got them from somewhere else, you know, just calm LA ting. I feel like I'm on a, I'm on a LA vibe Heard right you. now, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Socks and things, but you. yeah, man. I, uh, Alexander McQueen on the mm-hmm. feet. I got some new pants from Diesel. They had a crazy sale in New York, so I got these for a lot cheaper than they had to be. Uh, thank God. I got this Cherion uh, sweater vest. This is from a very new brand out it's in Philly. Cherion. Cherion. That's how you say it, man? Yeah. Um, shout out Philly. Used to live in Philly. Uh, young designer out there doing his thing. This comes in another color as well, and they got a few other sweaters. So very, very cozy. A lot of jewelry as always. Shout out my girl for working in fashion and giving me a lot of free things. So Honeymoon. Yeah, bro. Mm. Hey, we passed that now. We still great. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Trust them. That's good, though. I gotta start switching it up. He said, shit. He said, shit. Nah, that's good stuff. Shout out Daily Paper on the top. Got this in London. You know what I'm saying? If you're in London, check out the store in Central London. Got Arte. It's from a store in Arte Antwerp in Belgium. I'm saying that. Just got Jordan's on the the feet. Concords. Yes, sir. I didn't know Antwerp. People were fighting for those. I want those so bad. Yeah. Concords. That's true, bro. Nah, for a fact. I had to. Especially during high school. I feel like they came out. Everybody was going crazy. Nah, that was the time. was high school. Concords and what's the blue and black one? The Gamma? Gamma Gamma Blues? The The Gamma. They had the baby blue. Yeah. They're black. Okay, okay. Or Space Jam. Crazy. Uh, Mm -hmm. Daily Paper, Zip Up, uh, Daily Paper, and Van Gogh. Denim pants, Jeez. docks on the feet, mm. something like that. Hey, oh, come on. Nice. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, Five it, Aside man. Podcast <laughs> in Los Angeles, you know what I'm saying, with a very, very, very special guest. Long overdue, Kellen Acosta appreciate in the building, man. We appreciate y'all for tapping in with us. Part of the Five Aside family now, yeah, for man. Sure, yeah, bro. Yeah, I for sure, That's, of course, love. Of That's love. Of course. Absolutely, absolutely. And we appreciate y'all for tuning in, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or watching on YouTube. Yo, follow us. Tap in on all social media. Subscribe. We yeah. appreciate y'all for y'all time, and we're going to see y'all on sure. the next Episode one. 33. Yes, sir. Right. Moving like Magic Johnson. Peace. Peace. Peace.